Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, I'm James, editor of Venture Bike Rider magazine. And judging by the number of people here, you've got a bit of an inkling who our special surprise guest at this year's festival is. Uh, someone who's an inspiration to many of us, hugely entertaining YouTuber. I'm delighted to announce that Itchy Boos, please come to the stage. How are you doing? How are you enjoying the festival so far? Uh, it's amazing. It's so much bigger than I thought and uh, amazing to see all the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's super cool to be here. Excellent. Now, you've got a presentation for us today, haven't you? So I will uh, leave you to wow these people with tales of your adventures uh, and a look behind the scenes of how you make your videos on the road. Yes, um, that, that's why I asked if they could put the screen a little bit like this, so I have like a little, little... It's coming, it's coming. Uh, do I need to point at you? <laughs> <laughs> There's a tech man sweating in the corner. <laughs> there we go. Yes, so, um, yeah, I, I didn't know I was gonna be here until like a week ago, so um, it was also a little bit of a surprise for me, because um, I, I, I am uh, traveling through West Africa, and uh, yeah, a week ago, I was still tooling around uh, Africa. Um, so I left my bike there and I flew here. So I hope, oh, I left my bike with like a kind of a random dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's gonna still be there when I go back, but I'm sure it will be. And um, so yeah, I thought I would, uh, I, I thought it be, might be nice to talk a little bit about how it's like to travel on your own while also trying to make videos um, on YouTube. And so that's why I, well, I made a little bit of presentation so I can, I can, I can sneak what, what I was gonna say. So well, I started my journey like four and a half years ago now. And um, I started with one GoPro, started riding. And um, I think the first yeah, 100 videos I made with the one little GoPro. And now I have, on a daily basis, I use two GoPros, a drone, a tripod, what else, a 360 degree camera. And I've now created over 570 videos, so it's been um, it's been a little bit, bit of a journey. And over time, over all of those videos, um, the whole YouTube thing got a little bit out of hand. Um, so now it's kind of come to like the bizarre point that um, there are almost more videos created about me than I can create myself, <laughs> and they have like really catchy titles like. Itchy Boots Secret Life Exposed. <laughs> I, I clicked on that, I was like, what? <laughs> Tell me what is my secret life, I'm really curious now. Uh, and yeah, things you didn't know about her, I was like, really? So yeah, it's getting really, that's really a bizarre thing. And then you get like, am I getting boring? Maybe, <laughs> I hate Itchy Boots. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But this is maybe one that's, that these type of videos started popping up and um, they all like Itchy Boots secret camera crew exposed. And for some reason these videos do really well on YouTube. They have like over like a quarter million of views. And I was like, but who are these people? Where is this crew? So I also clicked on that one. And well, <laughs> then they also say halfway through the video she doesn't have a crew. Oh, there goes the thing. Ah. Um, which I already knew of course. But <laughs> The whole thing about like these type of videos appearing, I started thinking like, why do so many people even think that? Because to me, it's kind of an absurd, absurd concept. And I thought maybe the long way around, can see there's the secret camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> this is not me flying that drone. Th that is the ABR festival, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I blame it a little bit on the long way around because they, I think, had a, had a cameraman there that now it maybe sounds like that's the normal thing to do, which oh, I don't know any other traveler that would travel with a camera crew. Um, so then I came up with two hypotheses, like why would this spark so much, like why do people think that? And then I thought, okay, maybe some of my filming techniques are not understood. So 360 degree camera stuff is relatively new, I suppose and flying a drone that everybody knows how it works. So maybe that's why, you know, like, but because who is taking those drone shots? Has to be someone else. Um, or people just can't believe I have the balls to ride around the world on a motorbike. 
I'm not going to try and prove that um, last part. So I thought, let's just focus on the drone stuff. So um, that's what I wanted to talk about now. Ah, yeah. So you might think, okay, so why don't I show in my videos how I fly the drone and ride a motorcycle at the same time? And I have two main reasons for that, is that I do find it, I try to keep the magic alive. So if you imagine watching a, an action movie, and then just before the action shot, you see a behind the scenes and you see like all the cameras everywhere and how it's done, kind of takes away the magic from the actual shot, right? So I don't really want to film myself whipping out the drone and start flying it. I try to be like a cinematic creator sometimes. Um, and the other reason is that the way I ride a motorcycle and fly a drone at the same time, you know, it might not be the safest way to do it, <laughs> you know. Um, so obviously I don't want to give the bad example and, you know. So that's why I don't put that on YouTube. But I thought, well, today we're a small crowd. <laughs> So um, I thought, let's just show you um, how I do it. So now comes video. If you can. So I recorded right. this. Oh, now I'll show you how I take those drone shots while riding a motorbike. Do not try this at home or in traffic. Generally, don't do as I do because, well, I shouldn't encourage dangerous behavior. So I have my controller. Take this one off. Because this is where I'll stick the controller with, um, what's it called, Velcro. This is the biggest drone <laughs> I have had so far, but ah, it's so good. Heavy, but worth it. All right, so I'll first fly it up in the air. I'll usually fly it in a medium speed. I can have slow speed, super speed, <laughs> or sport speed, or normal. I usually do it in normal. All right, good. Take off. I'll fly it back. There we go. Then I'll stick this on. I usually take my gloves off because then I have more control over the controls. And then it's a matter of Getting some speed, usually getting to second gear. Oh, there's a motorbike coming. <laughs> nice, dusty. So I make sure I get to second or third gear. Third gear is good. And then I fly with one hand. <laughs> so I always have to keep an eye on the frame. Am I still in frame? Yes. That's why you shouldn't do this with traffic because you gotta look down on the screen if I'm still in frame. Or basically to check what I'm filming. I usually I have to stop several times, well usually always actually, because I want to take a different angle or I'm completely wrong with the angle. <laughs> so I'll tend to well, maybe stop like five times or something to look at what I'm doing. Now I try to always avoid having a car in the shot because if there is a car coming from that side or behind me then I'll immediately get 
comments that that must be the camera crew that's flying the drone. <laughs> so, try to avoid that. Uh, right now I absolutely have no idea if I'm still in the frame or not. I have no idea where I am. Where is the... Oh, over there I am. No, wait, where am I? There it is. Land. Oh, that's it really. And that's it. Easy. <laughs> so uh, I was I was hoping to to pause the video at some point because I don't know if you noticed, but the 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 the, the camera went kind of like this, or it looked like that. And that's, I film with a 360 degree camera. So when you have a 360 degree camera, basically you're filming everything. And then in the editing software, you can say, okay, I want to pick this frame, or I want to pick this frame, or I want it to move from this frame, slowly move to that frame in that amount of time. And that's also, it baffles a lot of people. So um, people are like, but who is moving the camera? And I'm, I just want to say, oh, I don't have a tiny human sitting on my handlebar, obviously. <laughs> So you, when you see it in the screen left, you see my 360 degree camera is just mounted right there at the front. And that's how I can like move the shot around like that. So yeah, well, that's basically uh, how, how I do the drone flying thing. And now you might think like, is that really the only way of doing it? Now, obviously it's not. There's other ways of doing this. And um, one other method you can use to fly a drone while you're riding your motorbike on your own is a function called Active Track. And um, oh, I grabbed this picture just from the internet, that's not me. But basically, you see a, a guy on a motorbike, and what you literally do is you, you draw a, a rectangular around yourself on the screen of your drone controller, and then you tell it, like, follow that thing, or that me there. The problem with that is that it's a visual connection. So your drone is literally like looking at you and trying to follow you where you go. But if you disappear behind a tree for a second, the drone loses you and it will just start hovering uh, on one place. Oh, that's maybe also one thing to, if you've never flown a drone before. If you don't touch the controls, it's just hovering in one place. So that's how you can get on the bike and get ready before you go. It's just up in the air hovering if you don't touch the controls. Um, so I've tried that. In the beginning of my journey, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And I tried it. And then, well, one time even, I rode behind a tree and the drone just started flying completely the different direction. So I was like, okay, this is not for me. Then there's another option called follow me. Um, the problem is then apparently it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So it will just right, fly straight into a tree if there's a tree <laughs> in the way. Um, so that's also not really for me. Um, now you can also program routes. Oh, sounds very complicated to me. So maybe, I don't know, I've been using this method for four years now. I am stuck in my ways. So I don't know, for me this is how I do it and how it works. Um, that's why I've been using it. Now I do know I've, I'm using DJI drones. Now I know there's another brand of drone that can do really cool things and it will fly around you and wow, it looks amazing. And I considered like, should I get one of those? But I thought, nobody is gonna believe me anymore, you know, like, <laughs> it is too good, like, yeah. So I was like, okay, never mind. And, you know, maybe you wonder like, why is it even important to me whether or not people believe that you're traveling alone or not? And, but I think it does bother me, you know, because man, like I put in so much work. <laughs> It's like, I travel, I, I'm working 24 seven really. So I'm on the road. All I'm doing is filming, researching, editing, uploading, writing descriptions. And it's all I do because, well, I don't have a social life in West Africa, for example. I never know anyone, of course. So I'm working all the time on this. And then to have people turn around and be like, you're a liar because it's impossible that you do this on your own. It kind of hurts or something. You're kind of like, 
oh, but come on, you know? So maybe I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of an opportunity now to kind of show you a little bit of this stuff. Um, so yeah, and then the next thing, maybe continuing with this, is kind of a little bit about like the reality of uh, being a full-time traveler while also um, doing YouTube. And um, in my opinion, like there's no there's no real in between. So I think you're either on a holiday and you're going on your motorcycle adventure, or you try to turn this into your job. Um, I've done the second one, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna try and make a living doing this. But I don't think there's really an option in between. Like you go on a holiday and on the side you create something, you throw it on YouTube and it's gonna explode and suddenly you have this side income. I, I don't think that really how it works. So you have to be like super committed all the time and to, to make it work. And um, that's what I've been doing. So it's kind of like a 80 hour <laughs> job, 80 hour per week job for me. Um, but I, of course, I absolutely love it. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I get to ride my motorbike pretty much every day if I'm not editing and uh, get to see places and travel. So I'm still really love what I do, but it, it is a job. It's, it's unfortunately not a holiday. <laughs> and um, one guy that I met recently, he, I don't know, he said something really, I thought kind of poetic and he was like, you have a beautiful desk. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of true, you know, like I have a really cool desk that's moving all the time and um, yeah, in some pretty stunning places sometimes. But um, yeah, I think also with the YouTube getting bigger, you know, like it's, it's um, raising the bar all the time because in the beginning when I started, I could get away with pretty bad <laughs> videos and uh, people would still uh, watch them. But then as you continue, it has to be better all the time, you know? So it's it's putting like some pressure on me sometimes that, because some days nothing happens really, you know? It's like, I'm gonna you know, make this into like a 20 minute engaging <laughs> video. So sometimes now I will need two days instead of one to record, you know, something that's watchable. Um, which kind of goes against my original concept of, okay, one, day is one video. I start in the morning, good morning internet, and then it, what happens during the day, and then I end the day, and that's the format. But now, nowadays I don't really get that all the time, because then not enough happens to be on video. And um, I have to spend two days to film, to only get a 20 minute episode. So um, often people ask me, oh, can't you make them 30 minutes? But that's, that's not really how it works. It's like, Going from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, that's half the time extra. So I would need half a day or one day more to even create that type of content. I know. Um, now, before I started the whole YouTube thing, um, I've traveled, well, I've always been a traveler, I suppose. So before I started doing this, I'm a geologist. And I was, for the eight years before that, I was always working and traveling abroad. I would spend like 10, 11 months out of the year away. And I visited, I don't know, 50 countries before I started doing this. So the, the whole travel thing is, uh, I think I got that, but I think the difference with what I'm doing now and why I think I still really enjoy it is that when I was traveling before as a full-time tourist, I was just backpacking, visiting you know, churches and waterfalls and basically following a backpacker trail. At some point, I just got really bored and you're just like, yeah another waterfall, like, oh, another church, like, I don't care anymore. And that happened after like two and a half years of backpacking. But now I've been going for four and a half years and I'm still super excited. Like, I'm always excited, like, what's around the next corner? Like, I don't want to really stay in one place. I want to keep going and see what's there, you know? And I think the reason why that happened now is that somehow this is going to sound really cliche, but it's given me some kind of purpose, I suppose, that instead of just being a tourist and just looking at something, now that I'm trying to make movies about it, it's just giving me some sense of, yeah, I don't know, yeah, purpose or something. I think I realized that for the first time when I wrote through Iran, that was the first time that so many people wrote me like, 
thank you because I had no idea that the people there were so nice. You know, what we see in mainstream media, you know, shows a very dark picture of many countries and thanks for showing us that it's not really that bad, you know, and people are generally kind of nice. And then I realized like, I, I can really do something, you know, I can actually make a little bit of a change and um, yeah, do something with this channel and try to, I don't know, reduce fear of the unknown maybe a little bit. And I think that's why I still get really excited and why I'm still doing this. And oh, uh, oh, oh no. Wait. Huh? Go back. Ah, okay. So, um, yeah, is it, is it uh, really uh, glamorous? <laughs> eh, not really. <laughs> I touched upon it a little bit uh, before as well. Um, I mean, uh, my life behind the scenes, what I said before, it's basically just working to, to produce all of this um, and to, to, to produce all the videos. And um, so I, I, I made another little video about basically what happens when I get to a room. That's usually when I shut the camera off. Um, and I'm always quite happy to turn the camera off. I'm like, oh, I don't want to film myself. I don't I'm sick of my own face. <laughs> So I recorded a little video about what I do when I get to a room and kind of the, the life. So this is my routine once I get to a room in a guest house somewhere. Step one, when I arrive somewhere, I'm going to recharge all my electronic equipment. Right now there's actually power, so I'm immediately going to do that because having power is a little bit rare and often the power will be cut off at some point. So when there's power, that's definitely priority number one. Let's see, where do I have some? I have a socket there that I can use. I actually have a desk in this room, which is absolutely brilliant. I almost never get that. So normally my working station, if I'm editing, I'll be sitting on the bed <laughs> in the room with my laptop on my lap. But in this particular room, I actually have a desk, which is great. Okay, so I carry two of these travel adapters. Both of them have four USB ports, which I use, and then I can also put in other plugs here. And then this one also has one USB-C. Um, actually, I'll put them like this. And that one I'll use to charge my phone. Then comes out the back with all my cables, or well, most of them. This is my drone battery charger. This is GoPro batteries, GoPro batteries. This is Insta360, 360, 360 degree camera charger. It's a bit hard to see with this <laughs> black floor. See, and this is often a problem that is like hanging from the ceiling. I don't know why they always put it up. And then I'll charge my drone controller. That one doesn't need a lot of charging actually. And right now it's, see it's still full, but I'll just put it up for show. These drone batteries are really quite big and heavy. I have three of them. Then I charge my tablets every day. So here I'll stick in my GoPro batteries. And then this one, the 360 camera. But they last a very long time. So usually I'll only use one of the 360 camera, uh, camera batteries a day. Sometimes two, but then there must be something really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if something goes wrong and I'm filming a lot, then I'll use two, but normally just one. Then what's next? My Garmin InReach, which I have always on. This one, I can use it, well, maximum, I suppose, three days in a row, but I will always charge it. If I have the option, I will always try and make sure it's at 100%, just to be on the safe side. That's another USB-C cable. Right, that's that one. What's next? Next is my power bank. I always try to keep this one 100% charged as well. If I don't have electricity, then I can use my power bank to charge my items. So I will also plug that one in. This is a very long cable for some reason. No, this is the wrong one. So those are all the items that I'm trying to charge on a daily basis. My next step after a day of riding is to immediately transfer all the footage of that day to my computer. I'm always terrified that I will lose a camera or something happens to it. 
So the first thing I always do is transfer the footage of each day to my computer or actually to my one of my external hard disks. I have several. So this is a very, very important bag. It has my external hard drives on it. I now I mainly work with this one because it is the fastest one. And then when that one is full, I transfer to one of these. These are all two terabyte each, and this one is four or five. Yeah, four terabyte. This one is now almost full, so then I have to transfer everything to the other ones, which takes forever. But I can now still use this one. Then I'll get my laptop out. Then I have two of these. One is just a spare because it's such an important item. Most of my important items I will always bring a spare because if that breaks along the way, there is no way I can find a new one here. And then I'll start taking out the SD card from my camera. So I have my 360, I have my handlebar camera, then my helmet camera, which is the one I am filming with right now, and my drone. If I use all my angles in one day, I will have four different angles to work with. So I'll make a new folder saying this is my 360 footage and then I'll do that for all my cameras. So I'll say this is for my helmet camera, drone. So this was my 360 and then I'll say paste. How long is it going to take? 14 minutes, not bad. So I'll repeat that process for all my different SD cards. Obviously, depending on how much I filmed that day, this can take a while. Today I didn't record so much, unfortunately, actually. I think maximum it takes about an hour, an hour and a half maybe, but that's when I filmed really a lot. Now that I'm copying my files, I can do something else. Like for example, get my laundry done. Uh, I need some food right now. I just, I'm really hungry. I need to look for some food. Well, kind of like the mundane stuff uh, can happen in this time that I'm copying my files. I actually have air conditioning in this room <laughs> the luxury so i had something to eat now all my files are copied to my external uh what is it called external hard disk so now i'm going to start editing and for that i have been using final cut pro 10 for years now so this is pretty much how well i'm just showing you a finished video now because if i'm going to show you how i'm editing then <laughs> it's going to be many many hours so I'm not going to show you step by step what I'm doing now because that's going to take hours. And I've already done that for my online courses, uh, the Ichibus Academy, where I teach all the editing stuff and how I do it and everything. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do when I get to a room. And the reason why I don't share this in my normal videos is, well, this is actually not so bad yet. But once I enter a room and I start opening my bags, it kind of tends to explode a little bit and I just have stuff all around the room so i never really feel like filming this type of mess <laughs> so when i get to the room i'm just usually i have to admit quite glad that i can just switch the camera off and that's why i normally also don't really film anything that i do in the evenings now my evenings are super boring because i tend to not go out at night at all <laughs> Um, especially here in Africa, but to be honest, I never really did so in South America either. I try, I just don't like to go out in the dark, so I'll just stay in my room. And so for now, I had a late lunch, but that also will be my dinner. So I'll just eat twice per day. I'll not go out again to look for food in the evenings. So yeah, I don't really do anything except for working like sorting out what i did filming that day and then the rest of the time i'll just spend preparing everything again for the next ride so if i haven't done it yet i'm gonna plot my route where's my tablet so i get my tablet out and i start plotting my route for the next day i need to make sure that i fill up uh, water in my camel bag uh, all of that kind of stuff. Sometimes I do a little bit of maintenance on Alaska, like cleaning the air filter, looking after the chain or that sort of thing. I sometimes film that type of small maintenance, but not always because usually it's, I'll just get critiqued on how I'm definitely doing everything wrong. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't even feel like uh, filming this type of stuff. And it's always kind of the same anyway. So yeah. This is kind of uh, behind the scenes, so maybe it's not so glamorous. Um, 
<laughs> Although, I don't know what you were expecting. My life in the guest room... How? No. <laughs> but yeah, my life inside the room of a guest house or hotel or whatever is pretty boring. Uh, not very exciting, so that's why I don't show it in my videos. Yeah, so... <laughs> um, I hope I didn't shatter all the <laughs> romantic views on how... how, how sorry? Oh! <laughs> No, no, do, don't feel sorry for me. Uh, I, I hope this whole presentation didn't come over across as like some whining about how how terrible it all is. It's definitely not the the intention. But uh, I thought it might be interesting to um, give a little look behind, um, yeah, how how I create these videos. And tomorrow, yes, tomorrow I'll I'll give another presentation. Um, and that's more about the whole Africa journey. So then I will go more into detail about um, my current journey through Africa and um, what's going on there. But we've still got a bit of time left now. Yes, oh Which yes. is good, we're not over yet. Uh, yeah. If I could just ask everyone not to dry the single-handed drone flying technique on the Bridgestone Trail, you will crash and the marshals won't be very sympathetic. So, um, but thank you for that insight. Absolutely fascinating. Um, one thing that struck me was you, you, seem to love life on the road, even though, you know, there, it, it does become work. W what is it that, that keeps you going? What is it that keeps you doing it day after day, year after year? Well, I think two things. The one thing is just, I just get happy when I see my motorcycle, and I'm sure you can all relate yeah. to that, right? And when I have my bike, and it's all loaded up, and I look at it, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, that's my bike. I just can't wait to get on it, and once I step on my bike and I have my little tank back there and I feel like my other luggage in the back, I feel like kind of snug on my motorcycle and I'm just ready to go. So I don't really need motivation for that, obviously. And I think the other thing is that I still, I really like creating. I, I love making something and that's why I, like, I, I do all my own editing and part of the editing is really mundane and boring. You're just like, oh, I'll just get that over with. But then halfway through when I get to like the part where I put like the music, like when it all comes together and I can like try and you know make something and be creative, I really I love that still. So yeah. And do you start the day thinking, oh I'd love to make a video about this or or I'm going to this place and I think you know I could do this, or is it very much just take the world as it comes uh, and, and see what you encounter? It depends. In, when I started, I had no clue. And um, I think also because my audience was very small, it didn't really matter what I did, I suppose. And now, I, what I said before, like I feel more pressure, like, you know, it has to, you know, come to a certain standard. And then it depends on where I am. So, for example, in the United States and Canada, the scenery is amazing, but I can't fill 20 minutes of scenery. So, there, I try to do like more research. Well, I always do a lot of research. Okay, what's an interesting place to visit? And what can I tell about that place? So I do a lot of preparation. So I know, okay, today I'm gonna ride this amount of distance and I can make a stop there and you know maybe talk about something and make a stop there. And I'm like, okay, that's hopefully gonna be an episode. And in other places, like some places in Africa, I do not have to you know prepare anything because stuff will just happen, you know, it's just, crazy stuff will happen and I don't have to make any effort, just make sure that the cameras are rolling and then it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have, you, have you got an example of a time when you know, you've got, oh my God, this is, this is, this is serious and, and you forget that you're filming and you're just like, how do I get through this? Uh, yeah, I, in that sense, I think I am the worst uh, YouTuber because when, when things are really going badly, I do not care about the cameras at all and I'm just, I'm so focused on getting myself out of the situation that, um, and then in hindsight, after the pass, I'm like, why didn't I put the cameras on? Why didn't I do it? But in the time, I'm like, I, I gotta sort this out now. And, and when I really feel like I'm in trouble, that always comes first. So yeah, and that's then in hindsight, that's a shame, but. Yeah, and you mentioned Canada and, and that area with beautiful landscapes. Um, you know, you've been to an awful lot of places in the world, you know, where would you go back to? Where, where's the place that really, really pulls at your heartstrings? Oh, that's a difficult one. I mean, 
it will definitely be, I think the reason also why I really enjoy Africa is because of all the crazy stuff that happens there all the time. Because even though the United States and Canada, it's super beautiful, I, I, I thought it was a bit boring. Or I mean, not boring, but I was just kind of like, yeah, it's pretty, but I, I think I just need like some, you know, language barriers and weird, I don't know, kind of the stuff that happens in Africa, like the unpredictability of it, perhaps. And everything being different, different language, different food, different people, different culture, terrible roads. And then I'm like, yes. And that's interesting because uh, I remember, I know many of you have probably done the same, rolling off a ferry in France for the first time on your bike. The first time we've ever done it. So exciting. It's brilliant. You're on foreign soil for the first time on your motorcycle. Yeah. Do you find that you need to go for that extra hit of adrenaline, that extra hit of excitement every time? Are you kind of seeking that? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, You're a, I, I think a, an so. An adrenaline junkie. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. yeah, because I do remember when I started in India, and it was my first time on an adventure bike, and my first time traveling on a motorcycle, and my first time off-road and everything was a first. I, I was super excited all the time, you know, and I was like, this, this feeling, I was like, yeah, oh, this is awesome, this is awesome. And then, yeah, I think the, the longer you do it, that's kind of just becoming the, the, the new normal. So you're always on this level of, like, okay, yeah, okay, just another day in the office, I suppose. So maybe that's also why now being in West Africa, which is definitely the hardest area I've been so far, everything is a mission there. But I think maybe that I do need it a little bit to kind of, you know, keep that excitement for myself. Uh, what is it about West Africa that, that's so challenging? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hot. It's humid. I get eaten by all sorts of bugs all the time. I'm well. I am in itchy boots, but there I'm just like itching <laughs> over everywhere. Yeah, bad bugs. No food or bad food. Um, uh, fuel is a problem. No no mechanic supports or anyone. It, yeah, everything is a mission. Yeah. <laughs> And do you find yourself being able to get into a routine day after day when you're in such a challenging and difficult environment? Um, yeah, I suppose because, I mean, I, I've, I've been doing it, I think, for, for this extended amount of time that it's kind of, I have my routine and all my things are in the same place. And yeah, it just depends on what happens. That day is always different, but how, how I do it, I suppose, is always the same. Yeah, and it, it, it's you mentioned it's quite a solitary life sometimes. Yeah. Um, do you you know do you ever come across other travellers on the road, kindred spirits that you ride with for a while, or or something you know make a place uh, explode in your mind? Yeah, I mean, uh, I do meet other travellers. I mean, in West Africa, it's not so many. <laughs> no. um, but uh, I recently, in one of my latest videos, uh, I met a guy from Austria. And it was actually funny because it was the second time I bumped into him because we were first, I bumped into him at an embassy applying for a visa. Because even, and the funny thing is when you, you must have noticed this, even if there are a million routes that you can take, somehow people try to kind of, you move through the same places in the same direction. So you'll meet the same people, you know, along the way sometimes. So I first met him in the embassy and then at a waterfall because that waterfall was literally the only like touristy thing to do in the <laughs> entire country. So to bump into another traveler there is a pretty high chance. Um, but I, I don't, uh, I'm such a loner. I, think. <laughs> I, I can't really travel with someone else for like an extended period of time. And it's also because of the filmmaking because I'm all the time thinking I should film this she whip out the drone, the light is good, this is a good shot. And if you're with someone else, then I'm going to be stopping and doing something with the cameras. And then I feel like I'm a difficult person to you travel. You're a really annoying travel companion. Exactly, is that it? I'm yeah. the worst travel <laughs> companion. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. And yeah, I, just, uh, I, 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 ju I am a solo traveler. I prefer, I think, just going wherever I want to go, not having discussed anything with anyone and just... The, yeah, the freedom to go wherever I want to go. It, it sounds like a dream. Uh, we also seen that it's it's pretty hard work. Yeah. Would you recommend it to people out here who are who are thinking they'd love to pack up, sell the house, quit the job, and, and go and do what you're doing? Yes, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, do it. Uh, I I just 
you know, I think it's just good to know that if you really want to make a living out of it, you got to work bloody hard. I think, you know, it's not going to just come at you. But, I mean, if you accept that and if you see it as a, as a job, it's a bloody good job, right? So, yeah. Nice, nice. A resounding endorsement, that's what I like to hear. Um, we've got a bit more time, so it'd be great to uh, get some questions from you guys. If anyone's got any questions for uh, Nora Lee. Yep. Um, now, we've only got two microphones, so I'm going to have to dash into the crowd. So if you're further back, apologies, I might take a moment to get there. But uh, if, please, if you've got any questions, put your hands up. Oh, some people down the front. <laughs> Fantastic, sir. <laughs> There's the mic. Hi, Norley. Nice to meet you. Um, when's the last time you've sort of watched one of your earlier videos to see how you've grown as a content creator? Oh, yourself? I can't. It's cringing. <laughs> 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 yeah, the earlier stuff is really terrible. Yeah. I, I don't watch that, no. I don't watch my own videos, really. I mean, I, I, when I'm editing, I see the same shots all the time, 10 times, and then when it's finished, then I don't really want to see myself. Are there anyone else's that you'll find yourself kind of watching on the road and thinking, oh, that's a cool thing I could take and put in one of my videos, or, or just for entertainment? Are there anyone else's YouTube videos that you look at and think, yeah, they're really cool, they're, oh, they're doing yeah, great yeah. stuff? I mean, the, before I started my own YouTube channel, I never watched YouTube at all. But now that I'm into the, the YouTube thing, uh, I follow a lot of other creators and um, yeah, yeah, I definitely do. But I try, I try not to steal ideas, of course. No, obviously. Anyone you'd recommend people here today? Um, good, like good YouTube channels. Well, the missing the flyer, of course. Of course, oh, yeah. of course. I think he's in the audience somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Anyone else? Any other questions? You, sir? Two-part question, if I may, please. It's nice to meet you, first of all. Um, I think for a lot of us, uh, myself included, the first time our eyes were open to adventure travel, especially a moto traveling, was uh, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman doing the Long Way series. And they had a whole film crew. They had an office crew doing their visas for them. First of all, do you acknowledge that you are pretty badass doing it all on your own? And how does it feel um, to know that you're inspiring the next generation of moto travelers that are going to do the solo around the world stuff? I don't know. Am I? <laughs> you are badass. Come on. Admit it. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not used to I'm Normally, I just talk to a camera that doesn't, you know, really look at me back. So. Um, I don't know, I think it's awesome in a way like sometimes people will send me a video or a picture of like their daughter on like a small bicycle and they've put her in front of the television with my videos, you know. <laughs> that really warms my heart. I mean, it's awesome. And um, yeah, if anyone gets inspired to go on an adventure because of my videos, it's awesome. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> sounds good, sounds good. Anyone else? Lots of people, hello, yes. Yeah, as a um, sort of so solo female traveller, do you always feel safe, or are there areas that you just wouldn't kind of go to, just just because of the the kind of situation of being on your own and being a woman? Uh, well, th oh, sorry. The the thing I, I I don't know how to. I can't really say how it is as a woman because I don't know how it is as a man. You know, so I can't really compare. So I wouldn't know how it is like to travel if you're a guy or not. So I was, I can only say how the experience is like as a, as a human person. <laughs> I don't know how men, you know, if they would be treated differently or not. I don't know. Most of the time I feel pretty safe. If I would be scared all the time, I wouldn't be doing it because where's the fun in that? So if I would be really scared of a place, I wouldn't be there and I would go somewhere else. And um, yeah, sometimes there are some situations where I feel like, hmm, hmm. I think your intuition kind of just grows. And if I have a bad feeling about a place or a person, I'll just go away. It's <laughs> pretty, pretty good attitude to have. <laughs> just, just ride off into the sunset. Yeah. Okay, one more from down the front, and then I will wander to the back. You, sir. Hi there, nice to meet you. Diagnosis on Alaska at all? Okay, can you Diagnos put it? Put it oh. Sorry, just put it to your mouth. Yeah. Hello, any diagnosis uh, available on Alaska? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I mean, okay, how am I gonna say this? Obviously, my videos are not live. 
that is impossible. I use four different camera angles, there's music, this doesn't like appear, right? So my videos are always lagging behind and the time difference, the lag also differs between how it was and how it is now. And um, I, I don't really want to share any more oh, also what the time lag is because I, it, it just gets an, how do I say this? People are chasing me down. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, you know? And uh, it's, I just have to be a bit careful. So f like for my own security, I do not never say where I am, where I'm directly going, or when I recorded something. I've, you know, people are actually ringing the hotels where I've stayed, asking if I'm still there, where I went next. Like it's getting like to really strange, it's getting a bit weird. So I have to be a bit careful with that. So, but it also means so that, um, you know, when I share something, then hopefully I've already have the solution. <laughs> Not always, <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately I gotta say, I just keep watching the channel. <laughs> Are there, uh, are there any places around the world that you've been recognized and you thought, how the hell have I recognized here? Yeah, I get recognized every single day. <laughs> and even in West Africa, uh, it's kind of, it's gone to like, re it's really weird. And I mean, Africa is still, it's okay. But when I was in the United States or Canada, I was recognized like everywhere, every petrol station, that people were like, yeah, chasing following me with the cars, following with motorbikes, trying to ride me off the road to say hi. And it's, I know it's all coming from a good heart, but it was kind of freaking me out. <laughs> so please don't ride itchy boots off the road. We enjoy yeah, her videos too much. don't do that. I'll wave, but yeah, it's, um, it's kind of, it made, it's sometimes, it made it hard there to actually do my job and try and, you know, tell my story, do, do my work, do my videos, because I was constantly being chased around uh, there. So it's, it's better in um, Africa, but um, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, some parts of, Af like where there's almost no electricity, I am fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody watches YouTube, so that's great. But um, yeah. Good stuff. Now the gentleman here has a question. How often do you have to phone your parents? <laughs> and, can, and, and can your dad actually watch this stuff when you're out in the middle of nowhere? I didn't you, get the beginning. Do your parents worry a lot about you? Do you phone home a lot? Ah, right. Nah, they stopped worrying about me a while ago, I think, because, um, like, as I tried to say before, I've been traveling for a really long time, so now they can actually see what I'm up to. But, like, all the years before, I would, like, send an email once in a month, like, hey, mom and dad, I'm now here, it's fun, bye. So they, they're seeing a whole lot more than now. Um, and uh, I think they're now finally convinced that I, I can handle myself pretty okay, so. I think some of some of the audience is worried more than my own parents. <laughs> they just care. It's a nice thing. Hi, yeah. Noli. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, America, Canada, and Africa, big continents. Uh, what's the possibility of you doing a half a season doing the UK? <laughs> well, I always said I keep the best for last. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyone else with a question in front of me here? There we go, sir. Let's wander over to you. Hi, Norley. Whatever Hi. happened to the bike you left in Peru? Oh, yeah. I, I recovered it eventually, so I got it back to the Netherlands. It took about six months, and it was an absolute nightmare because I wasn't there. Shipping, in my experience, I've shipped my bikes a few times now on airplane and uh, ship. Getting a bike out of Europe, very easy. Shipping it back in is an absolute total nightmare. But anyway, uh, it came back after about six months, but it basically it meant it sat in like a humid garage for six months with terrible fuel in it. And they strapped it in a terrible, when it came back, it was dead. Uh, the gentleman asked, have you still got it? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, anyone with a question over here? Ah, yes, sir. Let me wander over. Thank you. Hi, Noralee. Hi. Uh, your recent videos in Morocco, you used your drone quite a lot. And when we arrived in Morocco, they were emptying people's panniers and things like that. How did you get your drone in? <laughs> or can't you say... I can't, I can't comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Nobody searched anything or asked anything. That's all I say. <laughs> Diplomatic answer, I like it. Here you go, sir. Hi, pleased to meet you. Um, I think we all kind of know what it means by the name of Itchy Boots, but did you give yourself that name or how did you come up with the name? Where did it come from? Okay, so uh, before I started my YouTube channel, I, I actually started a blog called Itchy Boots. I was thinking I'm gonna backpack again and then be a travel writer or something. So I started backpacking and trying to blog and try and make a living as that. And I came up with Itchy Boots because um, since I always have this wanderlust, I uh, very much struggle with staying in one place. <laughs> so uh, I always wanna travel and move and go somewhere else. So I was thinking of like the expression to have itchy feet. I think it's a bit, you know, to wanderlust or something. But then itchyfeet.com was already taken. So I was like, oh, can't tell you, that's the one. And my surname is Shoemaker. So then I thought, oh, I'll just make it itchy boots. <laughs> Had nothing to do with motorbikes. <laughs> um, yeah. And then when I started YouTube, I just kept the name. Oh, we have another question for over here. Hi, Nora Lee. Hi. Firstly, thank you very much for your videos. And the question I have is, have you ever had a bad reaction from food? <laughs> do we want to go into detail about that, really? <laughs> yeah, people ask me that a lot, but I, do you really want to know, Dion? Like, must I say it? <sighs> we'll move on. Uh, and time for one last question. There we go. Have you been round the trials yet? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I borrowed a, a, a T7. <laughs> So I'm going to try well, we may as well put, put it to good use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I will try and ride it on a T7, yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's certainly worth doing. 30 kilometers of Bridgestone Trout is incredible. It really is amazing. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the ABR Festival. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. You're doing another talk tomorrow, is that correct? Yeah. And you'll be on stage with me again and with Ryan F9 tonight at 5.45 on the Bridgestone stage. Yes. I remember off the top of my head. Um, but it's been fascinating to get an insight into behind the scenes of your world. Thank you for sparing us the time. Uh, guys, a big hand for Itchy Boots. Thank you. Thank you very much.